PM denies rumors of conspiracy to remove him. Firefighter injured in Tampa Fracas, critically ill. Good evening, I'm Mamin Carlos and welcome to News on 2. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad admitted that he heard rumors of a conspiracy to remove him as the Prime Minister of the country. Well, he, however, was not keen to elaborate further on the matter. The Premier said this when asked to comment on the statement made by former UMNO MP Dr. Sri Hamza Zainuddin, who claimed that there were some parties who are keen to remove Tun Dr. Mahathir from the Premier's seat through the Parliament's power. However, the claims were denied by Dr. Sri Mukhriz Mahathir. He said that the Pakatan Harapan MPs are committed to stand and develop the country together with Tun Dr. Mahathir. Our second headline story, Muhammad Adib Muhammad Qasim, the firefighter who was gravely injured in the Seafield Sri Mahamariman Temple fracas, is critically ill. And according to the National Heart Institute, IJN, in a statement released today, Muhammad Adib has suffered progressive deterioration of his lung function in the last 24 hours. IJM said that a thorough assessment showed signs of consolidation and hardening of the lung tissue, thus making gas exchange ineffective. This is believed to be the result of Muhammad Adib's initial lung injury, and at the same time, his renal function also has not improved, where he continues to require dialysis support. In view of this, and after a multidiscipline team discussion, IJN said it was decided to reinsert the venovinous ECMO system again at 9 p.m. yesterday to assist in his respiratory requirements. IJN further urged all Malaysians to continue praying for his recovery. Well, a man died while three others were injured after the car they were in was involved in an accident at Kilometer Ampad, Jalan Skudai, Pantai Lido, Johor Bahru, Johor, early this morning. And Johor Bahru Selatan Deputy Police Chief Superintendent Afwa Nizam Yahya said the car had split into two after crashing into a lamppost. Superintendent Afzal Nizam said no identification document was found on the victim. Based on investigations, the victim was discovered to be in his 20s while those injured were between the ages of 16 and 17. Police have refuted the possibility that the accident was due to the consumption of alcohol. Police discovered that the road was slippery during the incident which caused the victim's car to lose control and skid. The case is being investigated under Section 41, Subsection 1 of the Road Transport Act 1987. Well, Laban police arrested five individuals who tested positive for drugs in an operation codenamed Something Jalanan, which was conducted today. And 25 motorcycles were also seized in the operation, which began at 10.30 p.m. last night and ended at 5.45 a.m. today. Labuan Police Chief Superintendent Muhammad Farid Ahmad said 60 individuals and 60 motorcycles were checked during the operation. Of the total, 45 summonses were issued for various offences. Among the offences were exhaust modifications, no registration numbers, side mirrors and licence. Superintendent Muhammad Farid said such operations will continue from time to time to eradicate road bullies in Labuan. The Democratic Action Party, DAP, will not engage in any cooperation with UMNO. And DAP Deputy Chairman Gobin Singh Dio, in his latest post on his Facebook account, said UMNO totally opposed them in the 14th general election, G14. Well, however, the Rakyat rejected them with the desire to build the new Malaysia. Gobin was responding to a proposal by Barzan National BN Secretary General Dato Sri Mohammad Nazriazis yesterday that AMNO to work with PKR and DAP to forge a unity government despite AMNO members not being in favor of such an idea. Dr. Sri Mohammad Nazri reportedly believes that it is the only way for AMNO to survive until the next general election. Gobin, who is also the Communications and Multimedia Minister, said the matter of former BN elected representatives joining the ruling Pakatan Harapan PH coalition must be closely scrutinized. He also said this matter will be discussed at a PH meeting soon. Gobin added that in the current situation, priority should be given to the reform agenda and the rehabilitation of the country and the people's mandate of GE4 must be respected. The minister noted that PH must safeguard the interests of the Rakyat who have placed their trust in PH to clean up and save Malaysia. 
And into other news items, now Federal Territories Minister Khalid Abdul Samad today revealed that an individual from Qatar has expressed interest to invest in Malaysia. And among others, in the third national car project, an idea mooted by a Prime Minister, Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad, which did not involve the government's fund. Now, without disclosing any details, well, he said the individual was planning on investing 1.6 trillion ringgit worldwide, including in Malaysia. Orang Qatar datang nak labur Dia ada 400 US di billion 400 billion US dollar 1.2, 1.6 trillion Dia nak labur Mestilah nak invest dalam industri Mahathir cakap dengan orang Qatar Kamu ada duit, kami ada kebakaran Kita dalam kabinet, kita dah letakkan syarat Nak buat kereta ketiga Jangan guna duit kerajaan Kerajaan tak ada duit Khalid said this at the closing of the 2018 National Leadership Amanah Convention in Ipoh today. Well, coming up next, Qatar businessman expresses interest to invest in third national car. Consumer Affairs KPDN HEP is looking into ways to break the monopoly of certain quarters in the supply of chicken feed imported from Brazil and Argentina as it had offset the price of eggs in the market. Well, however, in the meantime, cartel activities such as price fixing as a pact, distribution of animal feed at competitive areas and limiting joint production between producers and wholesalers are monitored under the Competition Act 2010. Its minister, Dr. Sri Saifud and Nasi Shon Ismail, said 35 billion ringgit is spent for the import of animal feed from Brazil and Argentina every year. Thus, he added that several long-term solutions are being studied to break the monopoly. Dr. Sri Saifud and Nasi Shon said a committee headed by the Ministry Secretary General has been established to prepare a report which would later be tabled to the cabinet. Sekarang ini, telah pun menggerakkan satu komiti di bawah kementerian ini untuk melihat bagaimana kita boleh atasi amalan trading yang dah berpuluh tahun cara ini. Hanya kalau kita boleh ambil alih. He said this after the company's commission of Malaysia zakat handing over ceremony held at Pokok Sinar, Kedah today. The prices of eggs in the local market were reported to have increased dramatically since mid-November in areas such as Pulau Pinang, Sarawak and Putrajaya. Well, Malaysia could follow the footsteps taken by India to address the shortage of essential goods for the local market and ultimately stop price increases. Maidin Mohammed Holdings Burhad Managing Director Dr. Amir Ali Maidin said this following concerns about the increase in the price of eggs. In a report by online news portal Free Malaysia Today, Dato Amir said one of the ways to curb rising prices is to prioritize the local market by stopping the exports of eggs and chickens to Singapore. He added that the government should develop a mechanism of temporarily banning exports during a price hike, such as done by India, should there be an increase in the price of onions. Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Minister Dato Sri Saifuddin Nasushon Ismail last week said he was studying the need to stop or restrict the export of chicken eggs. Apart from Singapore, Malaysia also exports eggs to Mauritius and Hong Kong. Well, Tabung Haji depositors should not be worried over the move to put Lembaga Tabung Haji or TH under the supervision of Bank Negara Malaysia or BNM. The Deputy Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Fuzia Saleh, said people should stay away from being racist. She was responding to an online petition launched by a person named Ismi Matisa at change.org objecting the body being placed under BNM, which is under the Finance Ministry. The petition was started four days ago and until today has garnered over 21,000 signatures. This was because Ismi highlighted the fact that TH was now placed under the purview of a non-Muslim, Lim Guaneng, who is Finance Minister. Kita mesti berganjak daripada pemikiran uh, resis ya. Sebabnya uh, bank negara regulate bukan saja apa bank negara regulate all the banks and all the apa financial institutions. Sebab kalau kita tak ada regulator, kita tak ada check and balance. Ya kalau kita di dalam tabung haji kita tak ada yang nak regulate, ya tak ada check and balance. So we need a regulator. Then who best? Then bank the gutter. 
Fuzia added that the role of BNM in this case was that of a regulator for TH. She said this while attending the Muchera Food Bank program near Balik Pulau today. Well, the foreign fund inflow is expected to improve in coming weeks, as evidenced by the inflow of 123.3 million ringgit on Thursday, the highest since 8th November. Inter-Pacific Securities' Cindy Rian Burhad, head of research, Po Ting Siu, said the heavy inflow also helped to pare down the week's net foreign outflow of 181.1 million ringgit as of Thursday. Pong said the situation could be an indication that foreign funds were looking at Malaysia more positively and that the country's consistent current account surplus aided the strong sentiment. He added that foreign investors were also not affected by the recent developments surrounding Lembaga Tabung Haji or TH and were not reducing its exposure in the equity market. Pong, however, TH intention to sell its stakes, especially in small capitalization counters, would have a big impact on the local equity market and affect sentiment among local investors. TH recently announced that it intended to restructure its portfolio and reduce its assets in the sunk market to 20% of its portfolio from about 50% at present. It also said that they are especially conscious of their holding of small cap stocks and wanted to focus on dividend yield stocks. Of Thailand's Rangsit University, known as RUS, presented Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad an honorary doctorate degree in social leadership, business and politics. The university presented the honorary degree to Tun Dr. Mahathir at its 34th convocation as its main campus in Muang Pathum Thani district where some 5,950 of the university's graduates received their scrolls today. Soon Dr. Mahathir is the fourth high-profile public figure to be awarded the honorary doctorate degree by the university after the late Princess Sri Nagarindra of Thailand, King Jigme Kesar Namyel Wangchuk of Bhutan in 2009 and Prime Minister Shinzo Abe of Japan in 2016. The colorful award ceremony at the huge gymnasium building was steeped in tradition with Tun Dr. Mahathir ushered to the reception room where he donned the red and black velvet doctoral robe. The Premier's wife, Tun Dr. Siti Hasma Muhammad Ali, was given the honor to don the blue and red velvet robe and accompany her husband on stage. In his keynote address, Tun Dr. Mahathir said he was humbled by the acknowledgement and pleased to accept the honor as the Prime Minister and shall strive to contribute further to the people and nations across the globe. The university can memberi penama anugerah doktorik kepada saya. Ini amat bermakna lah bagi saya. Dan juga yang yang lebih istimewa ialah uh, lagu lagu yang dinyanyikan uh, katanya untuk saya dan saya ini luar biasa lah tak berlaku dulu jadi saya amat uh, seteru dengan anugerah ini. After the speech, a song Dreamland Will Shine, specially dedicated to the premier, was rendered beautifully by Aria Rotanjanadit. The music was conducted by RUS's Conservatory of Music Dean, Dr. Denny Uspraset, with a melody composed by Uspraset himself and the lyrics penned by Pisamai Chandavimol. The lyrics of the song revolve around the efforts and sacrifices of a devoted leader. Also present at the ceremony was a Malaysian delegation comprising Foreign Minister Dato Saifuddin Abdullah, government officials and representatives from Malaysian universities. Still ahead, PM happy with ex-IGP as Southern Thailand peace process. Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad said that he is satisfied with the role played by former Inspector General of Police, Tan Sri Abdul Rahim Noor, in the peace talks to end the cycle of violence in Southern Thailand. Well, he said the peace talks between Marapatani, representing the manufacturers and the government of Thailand, were proceeding well, but added that it will take time to solve the issue. Dengan ini sedang berjalan dengan baik dan kita bukanlah satu perkara yang boleh dilakukan dalam sekelip mata. Kita akan mengambil masa kerana mereka yang bersisih faham di selatan Thailand ini terbagi kepada banyak puak dan kita perlu konteks semua puak ini supaya mereka akan dapat memberi pendapat mereka, menjaga kepentingan mereka. 
The Premier said this after receiving an honorary doctorate degree in social leadership, business and politics from Bronxit University in Bangkok, Thailand. Chun Dr. Mahathir further noted that he had only met Tansri Abdul Rahim only once or twice. The former Inspector General of Police was appointed as the facilitator of the Southern Thailand peace process on 25th August, taking over from Datu Sri Ahmad Zamzam in Hashim. Well, Sri Lanka's back Prime Minister Ranil Wig Ramasinghe was uh, reinstated Sunday, ending a 51-day crisis that had paralyzed the island nation and pushed it towards debt default. Now, the 69-year-old leader was sworn in by President Maithripala Srisena, who sacked him on 26 October and triggered a power struggle that brought the country's government to a standstill. Rick Ramasinghe had refused to step aside since being sacked by in late October and replaced by former leader Mahindra Rajapaksa. Sri Lanka had drifted without a functioning government for nearly two months as the rival factions jostled for power in parliament and the courts. Sri Sena's appointee Rajapaksa was unable to govern, failing many times to muster a majority in parliament. He was defeated six times on the floor of the legislature before being forced to step down on Saturday. Well, as rights and fears clan, the Badminton Association of Malaysia, BAM, receive another blow with the departure of the mixed doubles pair of Chan Peng Soon and Goh Liu Ying from the National Sierra. Now, the 2016 Rio Olympic silver medalists submitted their resignation letter seeking to leave the national body on 1st January 2019. The BAM in a statement today said it would like to place on record its sincere thanks and appreciation to the 2016 Olympic silver medalists who were also instrumental in the development and growth of the mixed doubles event in Malaysia. BAM wished them all the best in their future undertakings. Peng Soon joined BAM in 2006 and Liu Ying in 2017 and they won the gold medal in the 2010 Asian Badminton Championships and back-to-back -back gold medals in the mixed team event in the 2010 New Delhi and 2014 Glasgow Commonwealth Games. Prior to this, several players had decided to leave the national setup due to various reasons. Among them, Iskandar Zulkarnain Zainuddin in men's singles, T. Jing Yi women's singles, and Tui Kahming and Lim Kimwa men's doubles. And with that, we conclude this evening's News on 2. In our top story, Prime Minister denies rumors of conspiracy to remove him. And of course, do join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon for more updates and news stories. And Mamin Carlos, thanks for watching. And from all of us here at RTM, we wish you a pleasant evening ahead.